All right, hello and welcome to this very first playthrough of Thomas Was Alone. We're going to start this video the way we start every initial video of a game I play, and I'm going to very briefly tell you what I already know about this game. <clears throat> um, so I've got my How Long to Beat, pa Beat page pulled up here, and I can see that this game came out in 2012, so it's been a while. And according to How Long to Beat, it is three and a half hours long if we hurry. That's main story only. The completionist runs only half an hour longer at four hours, so not a lot of side content in this game, I'd imagine. And um, <clears throat> that about wraps up what I know about this game. I know it's an indie game. Um, I've never played it. I've never watched anyone play it. I've never seen a trailer for it. I don't know. I, I've seen screenshots. I know that you play as like a rectangle. Um, it seems to have some platforming elements. Uh, but outside of that, I have no idea. I don't know what the story is, if there even is one, if it's just a series of levels, or if there's actually a longer progression of a story. I, I don't really know what the point of the game is, what the mechanics are, if there's any combat, if uh, uh, any plot twists, none of that stuff. We are going in super fresh on this one. <clears throat> Again, never even seen a trailer, so uh, let's go ahead and jump in. I'm excited. I'm playing this because they're taking it off of PS Plus, and it's been on my list for a while, and so taking it as a sign to go ahead and take care of it before I have to pay for it. I don't know if there's a death mechanic. I've got the death counter on the screen below me, uh, but uh, it will remove it if it looks like there's not fail states on the game. Um, <clears throat> let's just go into new game. I'm not even going to look at the settings. The program was a failure. People forget this. It was a massive flop. The coder started adding name strings to the AIs as a joke. Thomas AT23612 wasn't special. It was just an AI in the right place at the right time. Gordon Falkenberg, f former CTO of something? Was alone. What? A weird <clears throat> thought to have. Okay. Um. Oh, there's no settings in here? Okay, that's fine. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> Point two. I guess that's the name of the level. <clears throat> Thomas decided to start listing his observations. For posterity. One, the whole alone thing. Two, portals. They led somewhere. He'd yet to work out where. Three, falling. Thomas was absolutely fantastic at falling. He was almost as good at falling as he was at observing. I'm getting sudden, immediately getting Stanley Parable uh, vibes. With this voiceover. Thomas couldn't fall past this block. Think, damn it, think. What if there was some kind of inverted fall? Mm. Some way to. What's the word? Jump. Yeah. It worked. Thomas had solved the great inverted fall mystery. This is interesting. <coughs> A big jump. But Thomas noted. There was no real danger in missing it. The world didn't want him to fail here. It was pushing him, but gently. I should try not to go too fast. I don't want to miss any important voiceover stuff. This all seemed a little dangerous. The world was not to be trusted. It was unstable, and it seemed to Thomas that it could let him down at any moment. He was starting to suspect it might even be doing so on purpose. Just need to shut my blinds. Paranoia. Whoa, 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 whoa! <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. Some of these levels are pretty easy. I mean, all of them are so far. Thomas wondered whether the portals were actually taking him anywhere. He felt like he was making progress, but there wasn't really any way to know. He seemed to be moving predominantly up and to the right, which might or might not be important. I'm gonna go ahead and take the death counter off until we need it. 
<clears throat> What's that thing in the corner? Do you see it? The bottom right corner? What's that? It have been paranoia again, but Thomas could have sworn the world was becoming more complicated. Why is that there? It always seemed to be one step ahead of his skills. It had been designed just for him. He wondered why. Was the world testing him? No. Too obvious. Sometimes the most obvious solution is the correct one. Something about the boiling, toxic, glowing water intimidated Thomas. He didn't like it. He certainly didn't want to swim in it. Pass through respawn points to save a character's progress. Mental note. Or water. Not water oh. To be <clears throat> <clears throat> it looks like there are deaths, so because if I fall on that, it looks like it's a death. So let's let's try. Let's see if we can do a no death run. Uh, Thomas was alone. <clears throat> the loneliness oh. was getting to Thomas. No amount of observation or obsessive note taking could combat that. Hardest one yet. <clears throat> Zero point one zero. <clears throat> the world was training him. He could feel himself getting smarter. There was the mental list to consider. Over the minutes and seconds since his spontaneous generation, he'd become a pretty skilled jumper. Hell yeah. He was evolving. He just wished he had someone to share it with. Easy. GG. I submitted hundreds of bug reports. I told that idiot this would happen. Overlapping scripts. More than one AI was bound to be spawned into an environment at some point. Turns out I missed the point. That little error changed everything. Luke Russell QA intern at ALS during the emergence event. Oh, 1.1. 1 1. Immediate and deep dislike to these scroll characters. Well, who the hell did this Thomas think he was? Wait, who took a disliking? Oh. Okay, so I can control- okay, so... Okay. Okay. Getting harder. <clears throat> Oh, Chris. He'd held his own. He'd even been graceful at times. Well, not actually, not technically graceful. That's probably, probably the wrong word, but you know, fine. There was that skinny little runt leaping about like he owned the place. Oh, shh. Oh, L1 and R1 do it too. Okay, good, good, good. <clears throat> That's much easier. I like the music. The music is good. <clears throat> okay, so now I understand what's going on in the bottom right hand corner. This was more like it. The glowy white thing. Only Chris could get to it. Which of course made it all the more enticing. What would it do? What new opportunity might this switch open up to him? Grace, Grace. Another 
chance for Thomas to jump slightly higher than Chris. How fortunate. Seriously, this made the whole switch pressing thing entirely worthwhile. Was this good? Because on the surface, it did not seem good. Chris was pretty scared. Little Red seemed fine, happy to be on his merry little adventure. Chris couldn't shake the feeling that things had taken a significant turn for the worse since Thomas had joined him. Sure, he'd been able to piggyback his way to ever so slightly higher platforms, but where had that got him? Well, to ever so slightly higher platforms, which was sort of his point. Alright, so what's stopping you from... Shit. He seemed so very happy at their situation. Friends together, a brave fellowship of quadrilaterals on a quest for greatness. That would be fine. But it was all the obvious observation that Thomas was doing which grated. Every time they saw something vaguely new, Chris would hear a satisfied little hmm from the vaulting idiot. He hoped the next portal would split them up. If only for a few levels. Ooh, ooh. No death run, baby, let's go. Oh, how am I going to do that? Oh, well. Here we go. We got this. <clears throat> Nailed it. <clears throat> Uh-oh. This was his chance, a moment to shine. This was game day. How am I going to do this? I can't jump while Thomas is on while Chris is on top of Thomas. I can't jump. So how am I gonna get God dang, John's got some ups. Oh wait a minute. I have an idea.
<laughs> that took me a minute. That was definitely the hardest one so far. This would not do. John needed room to show off his exceptional skills. As it was, he was trapped on the wrong side of these little dot things. Where did they come from, anyway? John inhaled the air of the open space, and it smelled of awesome. Damn it. Time to flex those muscles, to put his training to use time to show those little dots how it was done. John decided to press the switch to let the little dots catch up with him. John cared for his new allies. You could tell from the sympathetic expression he'd practiced in the mirror all these years. So far, not a lot to this game, but uh, the story is interesting. It's a very minimalist story. Oh, wait a minute. I can't do that. I gotta bring him back. Oh, no. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I fucked up. Oh, wait, I can fix it. Alright, we got there. <clears throat> I could definitely see this getting hard at a certain point. What's up, no more voiceover? To keep oh, there it is. He felt it was important to his image that he <clears> was seen <throat> to help the little guys. How the fuck am I gonna do this? Thank you. 
shit. Alright. This is a little tedious. Knowing exactly what to do, but not being able to quite do it as quickly as I want is a little... Mm. Can't jump these on your own? Longest level. The angry orange one was less immediately likable, but his unremitting cynicism and tutting amused John. Okay, that was that was a long level. Oh shit. This was interesting. <clears throat> a floating target. This would require coordination, balance, and timing. John was sure the dots would be lost, but he was happy to guide them to triumph. Oh, I see. There's one. Okay. <laughs> Maybe that's what the dots were for. They were there to extend John's reach to make his performance even more impressive. John liked the thought. He decided to keep them. Level one down. The initial group possessed simple variations in size and strength. More complex configurations were inevitable as the era spread these variations became increasingly extreme. David Yoon, forensic programmer, author of Life Instanced. I don't know what any of that is. Oh, that happened eventually. She was rubbish at jumping, and she moved slowly. She felt a little like her continued existence was breaking some kind of natural order. The crumbling pillar was a dramatic death, she supposed. Wait, what? Claire couldn't shake the feeling that she was not, mm. in fact, dead. <coughs> It was at that moment that Claire realized she had superpowers. Okay. Now Claire's in the mix. Claire, John, She'd need a cape. Thomas, and getting around that, you couldn't see a superhero guys. without a cape. Claire didn't want confusion. Chris. If you saw a cape, that made matters clear. 
You knew what you were dealing with. Claire was all about communication. And, you know, floating in water, which was her superpower. That's the way we do that. Good job, Claire. Claire's already my favorite. All right. They're not <clears> my <throat> friends, for <clears throat> I am Claire, and I will save you. Claire needed to come up with a superhero name as soon as possible. Claire was rubbish. Can I get out of this, though? Yeah. Claire arrived just in time. It was, of course, the perfect moment for superheroes to arrive. Oh, the water's going up and down. Okay. Ah, uh, okay, all right. <clears throat> I like that it's getting the, <clears throat> the the speed at which it's gradually getting more uh, challenging and introducing more. So this is a puzzle game. Began to rise, Claire vowed to save this little rectangle <clears throat> in as many restarts as it took. You don't need any restarts. Claire wondered if Thomas would make a good sidekick. Was she more the Lone Avenger type? Oh, she'd like that. The sole hero in a world of rectangles and conveniently placed pools of toxic water. <clears throat> okay, so let's... Uh... Uh, oh, right. Oh, I'm gonna need you. Yeah, I'm gonna need you. No? Oh. This then? All right, we'll get there. The others told Claire that staircases were a bit of a fixture here. Claire wondered why the world made it so difficult. It's okay, Claire. All right, let's go. Claire probably needed a nemesis, a villain who would show their true colors at the worst possible moment, hurting all she held dear. Chris was the most obvious choice. <laughs> he seemed stroppy enough, and his jump was so pathetic that it conveniently avoided Claire's insecurities. 
Yes. Chris. Diabolical Chris. The fiendish Christopher. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. Um, all right. You're in the water first, Claire. Everybody on. Nope. Oh no! <laughs> That's a death. I really like the music. The music's probably my favorite part so far. Wait. Where has Chris gone? Was he off somewhere? Plotting Claire's downfall? Claire was honest. And she had to be because she was a superhero. Oh. This was a troubling turn of events. Still, there were reasonably sized bodies of water to cross. Nailed it. Moving platforms over water, eh? Ooh. Claire's newly heightened senses told her that there were multiple paths across with various possible configurations of the Shit! Place. Well, now hold on. All I gotta do with these guys is just jump on, right? Hurdle the whole thing, yeah. Careful, Nick. Trying to fucking. There we go. There. Oh, God. Hold on. There. All right. They were doing really well. Claire hoped she could get them all across. John was fully aware he could do this alone. Thomas hoped he'd never have to. John was fully aware he could do this alone.
<clears throat> is it is it is it ten levels per area or ten stages per world or whatever? Oh, it's just me. Claire was alone, which is odd. Shit. She wasn't meant to be alone. She needed to be where there were rectangles to save. Being the only superhero in a given space kind of defeats the object. Spikes? That was new. Claire avoided them. She decided they were most likely her kryptonite. Not the rubbish red kryptonite either, the proper radioactive green stuff. Something had gone wrong. Oh no. There was a disturbance in the force. I'd like to jump, please. It altered the matrix. The world was reacting to their progress. It was amassing its forces. It was plotting yeah. against them. Claire finally had a nemesis. Oh fuck me. God damn it, Claire. Move those legs! Oh, shut up. Crap. Alright, Nick, just take a second. There. Ooh. <laughs> oh, don't touch the spikes. I built protections into the system. When overlaps occurred, the world generated a splitter to remove the unwanted additions. It's like a white blood cell. It investigates, captures, and moves it from play. Jungle must form a senior systems architect intelligence systems. Okay. Alright, we'll do one more. What? Who are you? Laura was pleased this one was behind a wall. Maybe he'd never know what she could do. Maybe, maybe, they could just have a conversation. Hang out. As long as he didn't find out what she could do. Which would never happen, so long as they stayed separate. Okay. Color me intrigued. What can Laura do? What is all this? Laura didn't have time to worry about the ominous pixel cloud. It had been following her for some time, and it had kept itself to itself until now. Do I have to worry about that thing? As the square, who had shyly introduced himself as Chris, bounced atop Laura, she began to worry that he was just using her like all the others had. They'd all bounced too, and then they disappeared when her back was turned. Hmm. 
Only the ominous pixel cloud ever remained, looking a little bigger and a little less hungry with every disappearing friend. With every bounce, Laura found herself less and less irritated by Chris. She started to miss him when he wasn't there, on another platform or something. <laughs> She'd wonder what he was up to. Was he missing her? He wasn't saying very much. Shit. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, this is fun. This is a relaxing time. I'm curious to know where the story's going to go. Um was in love. She was perfect. <laughs> had to tell her so. Uh I, I mean, it's not blowing my mind or anything, but tell her. not yet, anyway. Are you in love, Chris? For a moment, the large, ominous pixel cloud wasn't about, though. Yeah, probably best to wait. Oh, no! I'm so sorry, Chris. Okay, so that's not how you do that. Oh, I think I understand. No, that's just... Just do it this way. Oh, look, we're all the, the whole gang's here. Chris was massively disappointed to run into the gang again. He'd enjoyed the alone time with his new girlfriend. If I say it out loud, he told himself. He didn't want to scare her off. Bounce on Laura a hundred times. <laughs>
the others seemed suspicious of Laura and the eager-looking pixel cloud of death which seemed to be watching her. Sure, they'd use her inherent bounciness to reach slightly higher jump points, but they wouldn't strike up a conversation with her. Chris found them rude. Rude? And always there. I see. Fake. That the answer? Yeah. All right, we got there. We got there. All right, what are we doing here? wouldn't drop it. Who's that cloud guy? Why is he following us? What's that rumbling hungry sound he keeps making? Chris, can we just leave Laura behind? Rude. Oh shit. Uh Okay. Oh, fuck off. Are you kidding me? God damn it. Oh, I missed it.
All right. Get us out of here. How am I gonna get a... Damn it! God damn it. Watching my door because my uh, son's about to get off the bus. This is a long level. It's long because I'm stupid, but still. I thought maybe I couldn't get through that. Oh, that's Laura. Okay. Laura liked her new gang. She liked Chris. She liked having friends. Oh, those fuck. Ones sticking around too. Not like those losers. Damn it! It was a massacre. We're only counting that as one death, because it's only one fail state. Ah, oh, shit. Like 
liked her new gang. She liked Chris. She liked having friends. These were ah, God damn it! Come on, Nick. Oh my fucking god. This is the hardest level so far because it actually requires speed. Um, I'm just going to pause the recording. Give me a second. Okay, sorry about that. Um... Laura liked her new gang. She liked Chris. She liked having friends. These ones seem to be sticking around too. Not like there we go. Losers from before. <sighs> okay. Let's see, uh... I just realized what's about to happen. Don't fucking fall. Whatever you do. God damn it. Oh, are you kidding me? some level. Um. The pixel cloud was getting closer. It was spending more and more time hovering around. Laura could tell it was making the others uncomfortable. Okay, sorry, I had to pause it a second time. Hopefully that doesn't mess the Oh, oh. <laughs> Whoops. Hopefully that doesn't mess the recording up. I'm not, I don't think I've ever had to pause twice before in a single video. I should have stopped after the last one, but I thought I could get this in before I had to take a break. But that's okay. I was only gone for about ten minutes. Okay. 
How are we going to do this? Oh, that is going to kill... Woo! Okay. Good start. You know what, Laura? Why don't you stay down there? And, um, move. You can move last. Whoa. No problem. We're good. Oh, shit. There we go. Oh, shit! I didn't realize that uh, I could, couldn't move through the dotted line. Well, nobody ended up needing Laura. For fuck's sake. Um. Oh, okay, we can just go over here, right? Oh, no, we can't. Oh, shit. Okay, that's a death. Is that the end of the level? No simulation can support too many entities. At a certain point, something has to give. If Thomas A.T. hadn't possessed those exact personality traits, it's likely the story would have ended there. We'd still be in business. Gordon Falcon, the corporate CTO. Artificial Life Solutions. Alright, we are going to start here next time. And uh, I guess that's going to start us right at 4.1, right? Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, and yeah, we'll pick it up at 4.1 on the next one. All right, so far so good. Seems cool. All right, see you then.